Good morning, <laughs> listeners. Good morning, everybody out there, internet, um, radio. We have today Mandisa Morrison, who was featured on Issue 22, and she is the owner of Shoe Rehab and also the Foot Spa, which is located in Gable Woods Mall. Um, Mandisa started a business in 2013, yes. and um, it was based on, a, uh, she just had an idea, you know, um, of having a, well, a shoe repair outlet up north because there she was, was always used to mash up. That one, yeah. <laughs> breach, breach. Right, and also, apart from that, um, she realized that they were only repair stores in town mm -hmm. right but we didn't have a place up north of a high standard to bring your shoes so if you live up north you'd have to travel all the way down to cash trees you know parking, parking is an issue yeah. right um and um, that's how it started now she has the foot spa she'll tell us all about how that came about and um even a little history and i've known mandisa for quite a while i probably were what 2011 or so yeah. Right. Um, we worked together, and I remember her talking about her idea. Yes. Right. So even before I had even thought of Dazzle or mm -hmm. even wanted to digital, I remember her talking about having the shoe repair um, outlet. Right. And she had a logo done and everything. All since you, 2011. You part of the process. Right. But I <laughs> had no clue what was going on at that time. I know what an entrepreneur was, but that whole technology of entrepreneurship. Um, that wasn't that's not something I was interested in at all at the time but she mm -hmm. was a visionary um, and she knew exactly what she wanted and I'm happy to see that right now it's how many years six years going yes, right yeah. and then she's also uh, she has two branches one gave it more and no gave it more yes and the initial one, the flagship store, which is in um, JQ Mall mm -hmm. and also the foot spa so Mandisa welcome Thank you. Right, and please um, share your experience with the listeners. <laughs> well, um, that's quite a flashback because I remember the first time I got the idea, I was actually driving to work and Rankin was the first person that I told. So I ran into the office and I was like, I have an idea, I have an idea. And he was like, you know, okay, I think it could work. I think it could work. And I think um, that's, a, that's an important um, thing to note for any um, body who wants to go into a any entrepreneur's um, past, present, you need to have a circle, you need to have home base, you need to have your support, you need to have people that will cheer you on within your inner circle. Um, it's necessary. Um, so flash forward to my journey. Yes, as Rank had said, started off our first store at the JQ Mall, um, where we solely did shoe repairs. Um, ever since then, I mean, we've moved into our second location and we do everything from complete overhauls to, to footwear, um, to just enhancements, to new um, items. We do a bit of bag work as well, um, repairs to your bags, um, belts as well. At one point, we actually made um, belts, which is something that we um, will be going into on a much larger scale. Um, and in 2016, we opened up our sister business, which is the Foot Spa, where we offer um, foot care. So it's, it's really, the brand is supposed to really encompass something that is surrounded by convenience. So you drop your shoes off for repair, you could have a pedicure. So everything is, is, is um, you know, attended to, shoes and feet. Mm. Now, what was it like for you? You know, it's easier for somebody to, well, I would say it's easier for somebody to create a business in a field that they're already skilled in. So, but you never, you never stick a shoe before. Never, but <laughs> never. You never put tips on your <laughs> shoe. So yes, you had the idea because you've experienced um, the issues of not having a, a, a place conveniently located for you to go and repair your shoes easily. But then you don't know anything about shoes. Mm -hmm. So did 
was that even more difficult for you to enter into this um, into this industry? Because you have to learn. You have to really learn everything about. Yes, shoes. the inside and out. I think at that point I was really driven on passion, mm -hmm. um, and it made it easy. It made it fun. It made me curious. It made me just want to learn everything. And to be able to sell something, you have to know it. Mm -hmm. Even if you, you may not be, like let's say with phones, you may not be the person that's actually repairing the phones, but you must know it in and out, especially if you're going to create a, 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 a living off of repairing, shoe, um, repairing phones. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in my instance, um, after the idea, I immediately ran off with my market research, which was very intense. I, it was about an entire month, I think I did. Yes, I did about a, an entire month just doing market research. Hands-on, um, doing surveys, reading online, um, talking to the right people. I joined a network of, um, an international network of shoe repairers. Um, and I started learning the insides of running a, a, a repair store and, you know, just the, the nitty gritty. So for me, it was, that stage was fun. Mm -hmm. It really was. It was probably the most interesting part of my journey. Mm -hmm. So how long did it take from that research stage to actually opening the first shop? Um, okay, so I remember my whole... December was the month where I was doing that intense um, research, went into the beginning of January, my New Year's, that's how I spent it. Um, and we opened the store in April, because you know there's a lot of, you have to register your business, which is important. So there's the, the, the staple things that have to get done, which takes a little bit of time, but it's critical. So you register your business, you do, you, the business name and everything, you open your business account, you start securing, you know, um, contracts with, with your suppliers, um, where, where, I, where our store is located, so you enter negotiations with all, all um, you know, suppliers at that point. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, so Somebody called it to fix that shoe. Yes. <laughs> so um, the name, Shuri, yeah, tell us about that. The name, uh, actually, I didn't... even the logo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, the name, I didn't give it too much thought. I wanted it to be something that was easy to remember, something that said what we did without having to explain it. I went to bed, and the first thing I woke up, with on my mind was Sharia. I was like, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. It literally translates to be shoe fix or shoe repair, mm -hmm. at least in my mind. And the good thing is people caught on to it. I remember my logo was actually designed by Julius Hollenstein. Big up, big up. Um, <laughs> and I remember Rankin was there. We were looking at the couple of drafts and and you know, going, I immediately knew I wanted orange because you know, color is something that is important in branding. Mm -hmm. um, so that part was fun. And having a, a marketing background, I really enjoyed that stage as well. All right, my question for you, and I'm sure a lot of persons who are um, interested in doing their own thing and becoming entrepreneurs, which is not an easy thing. I think both of y'all could say that. It sounds nice to work for yourself, um, but there's a lot in the background that I think people don't really take into consideration or you wouldn't know until you go through Start, it. Yeah. What was it like for you? Because I had a, a first-hand view of the, the struggles that she went through with the business and like she really did it on her own. What would be your advice? How does someone go about doing like what you said? How would they know to register the business, where to go to, to, to get financial support, and all the nitty gritty stuff that you have to secure when opening a business? How are you able to get that type of information to move forward? Um, I think once you, you do proper research, it would guide you through um, 
where you would what is important um, so for let's say in, in my instance um, I needed to find a place so you know you go you embark on looking for a place you shopping at, at different prices rent what you can afford what you cannot afford um, you would need your suppliers but I have preached that the um, small business development unit um, at Ministry of Commerce mm -hmm. is critical. They assign you with officers who guide you through the process. So if you may be green, if you you know you may not at that point you would not necessarily be able to afford, let's say, a consultant. Mm -hmm. You go to them. They start off the. Um, the registration process for your name search and, and to, to register the business, to incorporate the business, they would be the beginning point. So they can guide you through um, and more or less hold your hands if necessary along um, the path as to what steps you need to take. But on your own, you need to do your due diligence. You need to see what areas, you need to find the best suppliers, you need to know what's critical. And I think it's very important that even though you have the idea, you want to ensure that it is something that is lucrative, something that is beyond just a nice idea and something that can you could see a, a plan as to how it can make money. It may not be something that you know you, you blow up and you popping bottles and making it rain kind of money, mm -hmm. but you need to, to have a, a proper money plan as to, okay, this is the potential um, income coming in for the month. These are my expenses. I cannot afford this. Okay, maybe, maybe it is that it will not work as a brick and mortar business, but there's an opportunity for you to do it online and doing it online would mean that it's it's more economical, it's mm -hmm. more profitable. So I think it's important to, to get that, that bit um, calculated. Okay. So um, we know there are a, a few, um, well, we know the grassroots repair stores in town, right? And probably one or two um, actual shops. I don't know if they still exist or wherever they're located, but how did you place yourself in the market and make people recognize like, hey, shoe rehab is a place to come to when you need your shoe repairs, um, customization, detailing, etc. Um, well, for me, that was the fun part again. Um, it's really avid marketing. Um, putting together your strategy. A lot of people tend to think that, you know, like the the operators in, in Castries, um, one or two of them were friendly um, and welcoming to me. And um, we grew, we've worked together. We, we um, you know, had a, a, a nice little rapport, but it's just to, and I remember Rankin, you used to say this all the time, you, you need to know what your competition is doing, but you need to focus on your goals, um, where you want to go, what you want to achieve, and you, you create a plan as to how to get it done. So for me, I didn't focus too much on what was happening on the outside. I just tried to be the best shoe rehab that we could have been at the time. I just tried to use, well, I was the ideal client because as my son has said I always had a shoe well Frank don't even give that joke. Top, top, I top. always that's all you wear in now and top. I always had a shoe <laughs> that would go bad on me. And personally I didn't like having to drive all the way to, to town, to town yeah. parking and I mean I was situated in the north so I saw that opportunity. And then as a, a customer I didn't like to have nails in my shoes. So for me that was something that was an absolute no no. But that's one of the things that makes us unique. That's, that now becomes one of our biggest selling points. So I took that and I ran with it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of persons who shared that sentiment, they appreciated that. And I guess it's just, you know, to, to keep pushing, make the, night, the, the best um, contacts that you can, you network, um, and you just keep pushing yourself. 
All right. And at what point did you think, because I'm sure even if the business is, is known, um, people appreciate the services that you offer, the convenience, etc. It's still not an easy task for you. And you decided to take on another big task by opening up a foot spa. Um, which comes with its own difficulties and stuff like that. Uh, why did you decide to take on that decision and extend and, and have another business under your belt? Um, I think I just enjoy the thrill of, of the startup. Mm -hmm. I really, I, I remember our first, I think it was within our first month of operating at GQ. I didn't see where it was going to. I didn't see what I, I, I could not imagine what I'm, where we are today. But I saw this picture of a spa and I was like, that is so cool. Wouldn't it be nice if you could get your, your shoes, um, your feet polished and um, your toes polished and have your feet done while you come to pick up uh, uh, your item that you just had repaired. So immediately, that was on my list, on my checklist for the next best thing. Mm -hmm. So it was finding the right resources, finding the right time, finding the right approach to launch the next business. Mm -hmm. So yes, it, did, it, it comes with its challenges. Um, I will not lie, it's, it's not an easy task and I think sometimes a lot of entrepreneurs seeming, it, it appears that it is a lot easier than it really is. But it is a struggle it's at times. Mm -hmm. You need to stay focused, but you will, it is one of the most fulfilling um, careers that you could have. Mm -hmm. When you're doing what you When you're doing what you love, to do. yes. Okay, so I mean, you've done that. You've taken care of the shoe aspect. You've taken care of the feet now. How do you see the brand growing? Um, what more are you going to take care of now, my girl? <laughs> <laughs> do I have to say it out loud? <laughs> oh, there are plans uh, for there are more there, to come, yeah. right? Yes, okay. yes, there are. Um, I'm old school in the in in the sense that I don't often like to to talk, talk about, about things, things yeah. before. Yeah. You don't want to blight yourself. Yes, my girl. Mm -hmm. But um, we definitely have a lot of avenues. One thing that I can say is that we are, the, the, the foot spa has taken on a life of its own. Um, since inception to now, we have grown tremendously. I must thank all our customers that have been with us from day one. And there is nothing. I, I find myself at our other store, the Gablewood store, a lot more because what we have going on there is needs more attention. Mm -hmm. So I'm 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 both places, but you find that I am babying, I'm nurturing this new aspect of the of the business. And when I run into customers that have been our day ones, as I like to say, there is no better feeling. It's like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. And that brings a joy to my, to my day. I could be having the worst possible day. If I see one of my day ones, instant gratification, because they have been with us from inception and I appreciate every, every single one of our customers. And what words of advice would you have for somebody who has a dream? Because you've you've had several dreams. And let me tell you, <laughs> that will have the most ideas. Woo, my head's still burning. But what um what <laughs> encouragement? What words of encouragement? You know, for true, she has no, a lot of true. ideas. It's There's true. a lot of things that she wants to do. Yes, um, it's true. What words of encouragement would you have for somebody who has that? that knowing feeling inside of them and yes. they want to do it. They don't want to work for the boss man. They want their own their own future and, you know, own reins on, on what they do. What words of encouragement would you have for them? Um, well, the first one, uh, when, you, when you have an idea, you want to explore it right away. There's actually a golden rule. I don't remember it verbatim, but it's like, past five five seconds or something your mind automatically maybe not five seconds but your mind actually tells you um yeah that's not going to work 
So you have to, you know, like with the kids, if something falls on the ground, they say, <laughs> like, pick it up, the two-second rule, pick it up and you can't eat it past then. Mm-hmm. Okay, did I just say that? <laughs> um, but it's, it's kind of the same thing with an idea. You literally have to act on it right away or else you will lose you will lose that drive you will lose the the opportunity of 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 you know igniting something big so i think and that has happened to me that's why i have five million ideas from mm-hmm. Santa, fyi mm-hmm. um so i think the first thing would be to when you have an idea to really run with it think it through um think how it it can make money for you think of of the bigger purpose what what it will allow you to achieve in your life you want to do this business i i tend to i tend not to tell people like you should not well to each his own but for me want not wanting to work for somebody was not a driving factor for me because you at some point you may have you know your shareholders you may have your board, you may have, you know, a whole lot of stakeholders who essentially you are working for. Mm-hmm. So it's to have the right mentality from the, the get-go. Um, you act on your, your first instincts, you stay focused, you find your home team that you could call up and say, oh my God, I'm having <laughs> a bad day, help. Mm-hmm. Um, people that will encourage you, you keep praying and you keep pushing. Nice. All right, and Rankin, how could we read a little more about uh, Mandisa's story? You could read all about Mandisa on DazzleTheMag.com, right? Her issue was 22. You could just um, search for her name. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 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 and I think when you search her name on Google, I, um, it, the Dazzle should be the first. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> should, be, yeah, should be the first search, right? That's so what it's first. Yeah, that is yeah. first. Anybody, yes. even when you click to Addison John as well. Yes. Yeah. Mandisa started here. Well, yeah, unfortunately, no, right? the first time with that, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. yeah. but yeah. um, right. for those yeah. for those who join in late, um, Madisa, um, owner of Shoe Rehab, and is also the older but, sister uh, of um, Masana, right here. Don't and mention that. Two years, eh? Just two yeah. years. Don't mention that because so if she started here, and the first thing when you right. recognize that is yeah. Masana, yeah. right. Masana not do her work. Yeah, and also Mandisa and I, we work together from since oh. I think 2011. Mm-hmm. So all the crazy ideas, she used to come in the office, you know, yeah. and try to share it, and we'd be like, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, no yeah. problem. <laughs> but um, even to, <laughs> yeah, that's how it was. You know, she always had ideas. She yeah. always used to come to myself, Julius, yes, right, um, everybody in the creative team, yeah, um, downstairs for our input. Um, and I'm happy to see where she is today because um, she's one. I don't think ever thought of. Um, having a business of that magnitude, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Because I remember when she started, and um, I saw the operations. You know, I was happy but shocked as well, mm-hmm. because I actually saw that idea um, from so the, the we, corridors yeah. to where it is at JQ Mall. Mm-hmm. And then I remember telling her, "So why are you?" And she and she was working. She still had a full time job, mm-hmm. so she, it's not like she just I said, had an idea yes. and like that's what I want to do. She yes. was. Um, she had a, a full-time job. I was saying, why do you have one foot in, one foot out? Yeah. You know, it is a really good product. And as a true entrepreneur, what what she did was she saw that void in the in the economy, mm-hmm. right? Where two things, right? People could not afford to buy new shoes because mm-hmm. the economy is not that grand, mm-hmm. right? And the people need a place to repair the shoes, um, and it's all about convenience, yeah. right? Convenience and shoe, shoe love. And shoe love, yeah. right? Yes. So if you have a really good pair of shoes, you're not going to throw it out, yeah. you know? So um, I, I'd like to just congratulate uh, Manisa for being in operation um, six years now. Yes. And also opening the sister store, um, the which foot. is the foot spa, mm-hmm. uh, which is quite innovative as yeah. well. and entrepreneurial mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's what entrepreneurs do they just keep on growing and growing and and um just executing new ideas so you could find as i said find out more about Madisa on Dazzle magazine and you could follow Dazzle magazine on facebook mm-hmm. instagram twitter and you could sub- subscribe to our youtube channel where you can view with this interview